goodness, I love you. I just love you so much, and I praise Jesus with everything within me that I get to talk to you. So I'm going to open us up in prayer, and then I'm so excited just to get closer to God with you guys. <laughs> Dear God, I thank you so much for this video, and I thank you, God, that it is yours. And I pray that just in your mighty name that you have your way. I pray, God, that words of Emma do not come out, but God, I pray that you speak. I pray, God, that whether it be one person that hears or sees this, or it be every single person, God, I pray that um, as a farmer plows his field, I pray that you plow the hearts of your people so that seeds of your truth and seeds of your word, seeds of your love and seeds of your boldness, God, be planted within them so that they can take root and grow like a tree that is planted by streams of water. God, I pray may your kingdom come and your will be done in Jesus' name on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. I love you so much. Oh my goodness. Okay, so today I'm really excited to talk about the difference between boldness and pride. Because it really, it took me a long time to realize what the difference between boldness and pride meant. <laughs> because I kind of would get them confused. Um, an example of me getting it confused was last year when I was in the 10th grade, um, I was sitting in, it was a Wednesday night, and I was with my youth group. And I was sitting and our, past, our youth pastor was sharing a message. And I just had it so heavily on my heart. It was like, Emma, God was saying, Emma you need to share your testimony. You need to go up there and share your testimony. And just a little backstory, I had just moved there. So I'd only lived in this area for about, I'd only lived in Arkansas for about like a month or so. And so I barely knew anybody. And so while I heard God's voice of saying, Emma, you should go, I was letting Satan combat that with, no, you don't want to go up there and and share your testimony because that'll be that'll be so prideful and arrogant. You're just gonna say, "Oh, I just really want everybody to know me um, instantly. I wanna, I just wanna get everybody to see me and everybody to know who I am, and I wanna become popular right away." And like, so all of these things, which is totally not the kind of person that I am, but I believed it. And so, like, I honestly don't even remember what the speech that night was about because I was in such a deep conversation in my mind. I was like, okay, I really want to share my testimony because I know that it's God's, but then I didn't because I was like, no, Emma, you're being really prideful though. What if you're only doing that because you're wanting to get attention and you only want people to look at you and you only want your voice to be heard and you're the new girl, so you want to be known right away. So like, I was having such a battle that entire night of, do I go up and share God's word or do I not and so the night ended with the youth group but I was like what just happened because I instantly after the message was done I went up to my youth pastor and said I would love to share my testimony and we were planning the day of when it could happen and I left him and I was like what on earth did I just do? <laughs> I don't know what I just did. And I, but I still had, I didn't have full peace about it. And I was like, okay, I just said I wanted to do something that I'm not even sure if I want to do it or not. And so I went home and I was talking to my incredible mom and dad. And I was like, okay, so this just happened, but I don't feel like I should share my testimony. And I was explaining to them how I felt like it would be prideful to do that. And my mom said something that I will never forget. And she said, Emma, why would God tell you not to share him with other people? And I was like, you're so right. Why would God tell me not to share his love and truth and grace with people? He wouldn't tell me that. He would not tell me that. I was getting it mixed up because this is why. This is why it was so hard for me to determine what was truth. It was hard for me to determine because Satan masquerades himself as the light. He's not going to come and it's going to be so evident. Oh, well, of course I'm going to share my testimony. No, he's going to come and it's going to be so hard to tell. Is that the right thing to do or... Mm, that fear really looks like it's actually correct. And that, that timidity lo actually looks like I should believe it. And that, that, ooh, that 
lack of peace. I don't, I just don't know if this is right. He's going to come to where I have to discern the difference, not between what is right and wrong, but between the difference of what, of between what is right and what is almost right. There is a big difference between boldness and pride. I ended up going and sharing my testimony and I can't even tell you how many people came and said, Emma, I needed that. I needed that. And so I began to realize my theme verse for a long time has been Proverbs 28 1. And it says, The righteous are as bold as a lion. And I just wanted to encourage you guys that you are made not with fear or timidity, with, but with power, love, and self-discipline. You were made for Matthew 5, 16 to be the light of the world, to let your light so shine before all people so that they may see your good works and not glorify you, but glorify your Father who is in heaven. You see, that's the difference between boldness and pride. Pride is, I want to let my light so shine. I want to go and get up on that stage and hold that microphone. I want to go and love these people. I want to go and do all these great things. I want to go and get the trophy so that my name can be famous. So that I can become famous. So that I can get more followers on Instagram. So that I can get more retweets on Twitter. So that I can get more whatever it may be. But you see, the difference is, whenever you have boldness, because I'm going to let my light so shine so that other people may see my good works and glorify my Father who is in heaven. It then doesn't become about Emma. It doesn't become me. It becomes now I can do all things through who? Through Christ who gives me strength. How absolutely incredible is that? But you see, the enemy, the way that he attacks me is sometimes he'll like say, no, you don't want to go and make this encouraging video. No, you don't want to go and do this post. No, you don't want to go stop and pray over this person. You don't, you don't want to go speak in front of this group of people because then you're going to look like you're wanting to get all the credit. And that's whenever it clicked. That's whenever I realized, whoa. Uh-uh, not today, Satan, because you know what? I am here for the glory of my God. And if I read God's word, and it says to let my light so shine, it says that I was made with power, love, and self-discipline. It, it says that I was made to be set apart and called to be a prophet among the nations. It says that I'm called to make the most of every opportunity. It says that I'm called to speak life into other people. It says that I'm called. It says that I'm chosen. It says that I'm worthy. It says that perhaps this was the moment for which I was created. And I just stop at that thought and don't actually live it out. Then I'll the abundant life that God has called me to live and I'll allow Satan to steal to kill or to destroy the beauty that God wants me to not only receive from him but to walk in but to walk in I love how in Luke eleven twenty eight 28 it says blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it obey it, to act it out. So not only receiving the truth, okay, I need to go do this, but actually going to do it, not because I want to receive the credit, but because God, God gets it all. In Hebrews 10 35, it says, do not lose this confident trust that you have in the Lord, for it will be richly rewarded. In the Lord, for it will be richly rewarded. I think that's just so beautiful. I have a couple of stories to share with you um, that took place after God began to reveal to me the beauty of boldness. And um, I'll share two with you. So I guess one actually happened a couple weeks ago, and then the other happened this week. So the one that happened a couple weeks ago, I was walking in the grocery store. And I was having a day where I was, I just got home from school, and I was I was just kind of tired. And so I, but I needed to go to the grocery store. And so I went to the grocery store, and even though I was tired, I, I went in, and I just decided to place my heart in a posture of obedience. And I was like, God, I pray that you have your way in this grocery store. If you need someone that needs to know your love, lead me there. Do not let my weakness and my tiredness and my selfishness get in the way from letting you use me. And so I walk into the aisle because I need to get some shampoo and conditioner. So I walk into the aisle and there's this 
beautiful woman there. Oh my goodness, y'all, she's absolutely gorgeous. And I walk into this aisle and I pick up my shampoo and conditioner and God says, hey, sweet Emma, I need you to make colorful hula machines. And my heart just beamed because I was about to get to tell a daughter, I'm going to start crying, I was about to get to tell the daughter of the King of Kings how beautiful she is. So I look up, I've never seen this woman ever in my entire life, and I look at her and I tell her, I said, excuse me, ma'am, I said, you are so beautiful. And she looks at me right in the eye and she says, are you serious? I said, yes, ma'am. You are stunning. And she said, that's absolutely crazy that you say that because I've actually been going through. And she goes on to tell me how she's been struggling with so many things. And she begins to pour her heart out to me in the middle of the grocery store. You guys, I was just going there to get shampoo and conditioner. How beautiful is that? I then go on to ask her if I can pray over her. And she says, yes. And right there in the middle of the grocery store, not because I wanted people to look, not because I wanted her to look at me, but because that was an opportunity that God could pour his love upon this woman, that he could give a big hug to her and she could see it for the first time. It was a moment where I could be used as a vessel for God's glory, as an avenue for his truth, as a messenger of his love, and as a distributor of his hope. And I prayed over her for probably two minutes, just praying that she knew how beautiful she was, that she knew how loved she was, and I was rebuking every single attack from the enemy from her life right there in the shampoo and conditioner. And I opened my eyes to see tears in hers. Why? Not because she met Emma, but because I was willing to not lose this confident trust that I had in the Lord, but be richly rewarded. Do not let, do not let Satan ruin the beauty that God wants to do through you. Pride comes before the fall. Boldness comes before God will lift you up so that you can lift him, so that you can also lift others up. Boldness comes from God. Boldness is beauty. It's beauty because God designed it. He made you with it. He knitted your inmost being with it. Something else happened this week. I think it was on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. And I was on a mission trip with my youth group and we were in Kansas City and we were in the mall doing a scavenger hunt. And it was so fun. And one of the things for our scavenger hunt was we got to hug a stranger in the mall. So we walk into Barnes and Noble and I was so excited because I was the one to in my group to give the stranger a hug. And I was so excited. And so I walk in, not knowing who I'm going to end up hugging, but just excited to see who God was going to lead me to hug. And I walk in, not even actually in the store yet, just in this little walk in between area. And there's this woman. She's probably in her 20s. And she um, has a cut on her face. And she's, she's very petite. She's so beautiful. And God just really highlighted everything around her and everything about her. So I went up to her and I introduced myself and I told her just how beautiful she was and, and how God loved her. And I asked her if I could give her a hug. And she was very timid. She was a little caught off guard. and But she let me give her a hug. And then I went on to tell her how God just had beautiful plans for her life. And she, she came across very uncomfortable. <laughs> she did. And she said, I don't do very well in... Um, social things like this and I don't know how to handle them and I said it's okay <laughs> you don't have to know how to handle it I just needed to let you know and so we go on into the store into Barnes and Noble to do some more of our scavenger hunt requirement things and then we come back and she's still there and she grabs my hand and she leads me out of the store so that it's just me and her the rest of my group kind of stands off to the side and she goes on to tell me how she said my goodness, when you were first talking to me, I thought it was a joke. But then I, as you continued to talk, I realized that you were being for real. And she went on to tell me her story and what she has gone through. And 
I asked her if I could pray with her. And she said, I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> and I told her, I said, that's okay. Because God, his love is patient. And he will always have his arms wide open because he wants you. He is a jealous God. And he bends down to listen always, craving to hear your words. Because he loves everything about you. And she said, okay. And so I prayed over her. You guys. You guys, how amazing is this? I think it's so beautiful. Those are only two. Those are only two. But if I would have listened to Satan saying no, I'm like, you don't want to go do that. You don't want to put yourself out there. Because they're just, they're just going to think all these things about you. You're just trying to get attention from more people. You're just trying to be talked about. They're just gonna they're just gonna think this much about your smile. They're gonna talk about how weird you are. They're not gonna wanna receive it. Are you talking about Jesus? Nobody's gonna receive that. I pray in the name of Jesus that you who are righteous, who have been called to be bold as a lion, step out in faith and not only hear God's words, but you obey them. You obey them. And you can walk out in faith. Because God has called you to change the world. But he can't use you if you aren't willing. And I pray that you have the excitement to speak. I pray over you in the mighty name of Jesus that you have the courage to walk. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you have the just the most precious boldness to sing. I pray that you have the most incredible joy to go out onto that field. I pray that you have the endurance to run this race that God has set before you purposefully. And that you have the boldness to let your light so shine. Not because of anything that we're doing. But simply because whenever your heart is willing, anything can happen with God. God takes impossible and he makes it possible. Just with faith the size of a mustard seed. But he just needs you to be willing. He just needs you to be available. I love you so much. And I pray boldness over you this week. Bye, you guys.